There's one other thing that people often do uh, and have problems with routers, and that is uh, run a server, particularly game servers, uh, but there are there are other kinds of servers, a web server that you might want to run, uh, and the routers are going to get in the way of those as well, aren't they? Well, you can actually use two NAT routers. You're able to put NAT routers in series, so that, for example, you'd have an external NAT router and an internal NAT router. I'm I've put together a page. It's www.grc.com/nat slash nat.htm, where I've drawn some diagrams to make this a little more clear and explain it carefully, because it's a very cool idea. The idea is that you could put your, your game server on the external NAT, on the NAT that's connected to the Internet. And then, rather than putting the rest of your computers on the same NAT router, put them on their own NAT router, and then hook that second NAT router to the first one, essentially in series. So the first one's passing all traffic through, but the second one's blocking traffic from those computers you want to keep off. Well, and it's also, so no longer is your game server on your LAN. It's separated as well. It's sort of on like WAN 2. It's sort of on a separate network. And, and again, you're able to access the game server because you're going upstream. You're going through the NAT outbound, which is where the game server is, on the outside of your second NAT. But it can't get to you. So if something were to compromise it, you're safe. Another cool application would be if you wanted to mess with wireless, but you were still, you know, you had like first generation wireless technology with WEP security, which is actually an oxymoron, um, as opposed to the WPA security, which is really good security. What you could do is you could have your wireless router on the Internet and then have an, a standard non-wireless router, which which runs your main network, your wired network, and you plug your, your second router into the wireless router. The beauty of that is that no, no wireless traffic is then able to reach into your network because that second NAT router blocks everything trying to come into it. So conceptually, these both are the same idea, which is that anything that's at risk is isolated from the rest of your network by this second router, which provides a barrier against these at-risk uh, routers or computers. Right. You're, in fact, you can sort of think of a NAT router sort of like a one-way valve. Data can flow out of it without any trouble, but un, un, unsolicited data is unable to flow back in. It's sort of like a backflow valve. It won't let the, the data come in the other direction. And you can chain them. You can put them in series so, and, and come up with you know interesting network topologies to really increase the overall security of your system. Say, for example, you were a family and you had a bunch of teenagers all with their own computers. Isolate them. <laughs> well, no, 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 actually, you, you, well, essentially, so, and then, and then you got mom and dad's adult computer right. where, where the banking and the stock portfolio and all that stuff is. You just, you connect it to the family router through its own mm-hmm. NAT router, mm-hmm. giving it its own little one-way valve. It's able that, that, you know, the adult computer, mom and dad's computer could still get out to the internet, but nothing that infects the kids' computers and their LAN has an opportunity to come back into you. That's a really useful metaphor for how a router works. It's a one-way valve. Outgoing traffic's allowed, but unknown incoming traffic is always blocked. 